This is Christopher John Bjorkness. It is October 18th, 2023. I'd like to start off by thanking my contributors who made this video possible. Thank you, John, Paul, Gary, Carolus, Wilson. Thank you so much. Bosma, Gregory, Kevin, Lance, Robert. I'm very grateful to you. Uh, Carolina, Mark, and Matthias, thank you all so very much. Uh, you made this video possible. I hope everyone is as grateful to you as I am. This is going to be a good one. We're talking about the Mossad. The Mossad is a deeply religious institution, and it is grounded in Kabbalah, which is in turn grounded in the Torah. And one of the fundamental tenets of Kabbalah is this concept that there is the Sitra Akra, the evil other side of non-Israelites represented by Rebecca and Isaac's twin son Esau, who has the soul of Satan through Cain. They have the myth that uh, the serpent in the Garden of Eden copulated with Eve and produced Cain and Cain's soul then transmigrated to Esau and Esau's soul transmigrated to um, Jesus Christ and that this soul uh, can be broken up into parts and that all non-Israelites bear part of this satanic soul of the evil other side of the Sitra Akra. And Esau's twin brother Jacob represents the Israelites, and Jacob is the side of holiness, the Sitra Yemina. So there's a war between Esau and Jacob because Jacob was a trickster, and Jacob stole Esau's birthright, and that really pissed Esau off. It made him, uh, it made him uh, murderously vindictive and he wants to get back and get his birthright back and he has six days to do it the six days of creation which are a thousand years each and they add up to six thousand years of the present world olam haze and jacob also wants to win this war and uh, since he's outnumbered he wins the war through deception and that's the basis of the concept of Mossad that there is this evil other side who is out to get the Israelites and exterminate them for what they did to Esau by stealing his birthright. And the only way that they can do that is to uh, trick Esau into subverting his own best interests and into defeating himself. So they wage war by means of deception. And they have uh, deceived Christian evangelicals into embracing Zionism and abandoning uh, long-standing Catholic and Protestant theology. Uh, they got the Christian evangelicals to uh, reject replacement theology. Uh, they tricked American First Republicans into becoming communist Trotskyite neocons who placed the interests of Russia and Israel above the interests of the United States. They even tricked neo-Nazis into becoming Talmudic flat earthers and Satanists and constantly working for the interests of Zionism in the name of defeating it. So they use uh, cleverness and trickery to fool Esau into killing himself off and to serving the agenda of Israel very often in the name of fighting Israel. So their whole premise is that they are smarter, they are trickier, and um, they are intellectuals, and that Esau is kind of bestial, kind of stupid, uh, kind of um, an animal working in the fields uh, whose opinions can be shaped and whose behaviors can be controlled in the same manner that uh, tamed animals can be controlled and uh, made to do whatever it is that their master wants them to. So this uh, mythology starts out in the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, we have in Malachi chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. 
I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob. And I, meaning the Lord, the God of Israel, hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. So, uh, again, Musad is grounded in this mythology, this religious belief system that has the menorah to signify the seven days in the first chapter of Genesis. Six of those days, the first thousand the first uh, 6,000 years of creation is the present world in which Esau and Jacob are at war. But in the seventh Sabbath millennium, Jacob will be able to rest from the war because Esau will be destroyed primarily by destroying himself through the deception and trickery that Jacob plays on him. Uh, the model of the Masad is by way of deception, thou shalt do war. Now that is a religious conception. And uh, this was revealed uh, in an explosive book by Victor Ostrovsky and Claire Hoy, um, by way of deception. The uh, fundamental text which this is based upon is the Kabbalistic work the Zohar which is really the primary Kabbalistic work together with the Kabbalah of Isaac Luria and the even more esoteric Kabbalah of Shabbatai Tzevi, Nathan of Gaza and Jacob Frank but uh, the motto uh, of the Mossad is derived from the Zohar, Volume 1, Bereshit, Folio 160a. And this is the uh, somewhat controversial translation of Pranitus in his book, The Talmud Unmasked. Um, they tried to reject this as if it were fictitious. It is not. Um, a lot of what Prinitus wrote about was based upon the work of uh, Johann Andreas Eisenmenger. Eisenmenger was the foremost scholar on Kabbalah and on Judaism. The rabbis deferred to him. You can find him quoted as an authority in the Jewish encyclopedia. Uh, he is by far probably the most knowledgeable person to his age on all of these matters. And I went and I looked up the original text, and we'll get to that, but you can find it over here on the side. And this is the English translation of Pranitus's The Talmud Unmasked. He was a Lithuanian, and he was uh, tortured and put to death for revealing all of these facts when the Bolsheviks took over. Zohar Bereshit 1, 160a, Rabbi Yehuda said to him, Rabbi Hezekiah, he is to be praised who is able to free himself from the enemies of Israel. That represents the Sitra Akra, the evil other side, the Kelipat, uh, Esau, and the non-Israelites. And the just are much to be praised who get free from them and fight against them, which is what the Masad does by way of deception. Rabbi Chezkiah asked, how must we fight against them? Rabbi Yehuda said, by wise counsel shalt thou war against them. That's a quote from Proverbs chapter 24, verse 6, and I'll read that to you later. By what kind of war? The kind of war that every son of man must fight against his enemies, which Jacob used against Esau by deceit and trickery wherever possible. They must be fought against without ceasing 
until proper order be restored. That's a reference to those six days when the two are at war with one another. And then when order is restored, it will be the seventh messianic Sabbath millennium, which is about to happen of Olam Haba, the world to come. And I have a book on that called The World to Come, which you can find at my website, cjbbooks.com. Thus it is with satisfaction that I say we should free ourselves from them and rule over them. Now, there have been many translations of the Zohar. They uh, tend to try to sanitize um, these verses, which reveal the fact that Jacob is waging war, a war of extermination on Esau, in which he will cease to exist in the Messianic era. So uh, I think it's important to uh, go through and demonstrate the facts and uh, follow where the facts lead. So I went and uh, I looked up the uh, Safaria in the original of whatever version it is that they transcribed into their website. And you can go there yourself. Here is the URL. You want to look, it'll be the Zohar, Volume 1, uh, Vayetzai, Folio 160A. If you click on that, it'll take you to, um, you want paragraphs 280 and 281, and that will be the text that, uh, oops, that will be the uh, text that we're going to be working with. And uh, just for the heck of it, I went and I um, put this into the Google Translator to see if it could handle it. And uh, it came up with uh, not a perfect translation by any means, but in the most relevant part of it, it's all relevant, but the very most relevant part of it, it says, he opened and said, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 6, because with tricks you will make war for yourself. Where is the war? Where is the war? How is it? My bosom, Jacob, I will strive for Esau. That means Jacob's going to wipe out Esau. And for this reason, he is entitled to a man who wants to leave his share and he will be able to rule over it. This is all more correctly translated exactly as Pernitus did. But I'm going to show you some more uh, sanitized versions. Uh, this might be easier for you to see. Uh, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 6. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counselors there is victory. So when you combine that with uh, the commandment of um, commandment of the Zohar to do it through deception, just as Tricky Jacob deceived Isaac and Esau and stole Esau's birthright and blessings, the uh, Mossad goes about to defeat what it considers to be the descendants of Esau, who it believes hate uh, the Israelites and want to destroy Israel. And it sets about to trick Esau and to steal his birthright and blessings, which is ultimately his life and his soul. Uh, the, um, the standard translation for a long time was... Uh, the Sanchina, Sanchino translation that was published in London in the 30s, I think it was. And um, there's since been a Pritzker translation, which is probably better. I haven't had a chance to look at that. Um, but I found it's hard to find the Sanchina online. Uh, and uh, the libraries I have access to don't have it. I used to live around Wheaton College, and they had the full set. And so I know that this is correct, but I'm going to read this out of an article published by a rabbi, and I'll show you the title page in a moment. But I, I'm convinced that this is from the Sonchina uh, edition, although I'm not sure about whether Elohim's in the Sonchina 
Soncino edition is uh, Elohim's or God's, Strange Gods. I seem to remember it as Strange Gods, but that's a 20-year-old memory. Okay, so um, what we're looking at is Zohar Bereshit. Uh, that's volume one of the Zohar. And we're looking at folio 160a, which is uh, the relevant part that I've been discussing with you. And uh, it says, contrarywise, the remembrance and visitation for evil refer to the other side, the Sitra Akra, the counter universe, uh, the Kelly Pot, the evil non Israelites of Esau, Cain, Jesus Christ, who bear the uh, seed of Satan. With allusions to strange gods, and similarly embrace male and female in one union, the one male under remembrance, the other female under visitation, both unceasingly intent on evil. They are the uh, Yetzer Hara, the uh, evil inclination. There are thus two parallel and opposing influences, the Sitra Akra and the Sitra Yamina, the male and the female. From the one, there flows the inspiration of true faith and all supernal sanctifications, the holiness of the Sitri Amina. From the other flows whatever is evil, all kinds of death and all sorts and conditions of mischief in the world. Rabbi Hiskiah said, Assuredly, it is so. Happy is he whose portion is firmly established on the good side and who does not incline himself to the other side, but is delivered from them. The Israelites must remain separate from the Gentiles. Said Rabbi Judah, Assuredly it is so, and happy is he who is able to escape that side, and happy are those righteous who are able to wage war against that side. That's the Masad. Rabbi Hizkiah asked how Rabbi Judah in reply began to discourse on the verse for by wise guidance thou shalt make thy war by way of deception thou shalt make war etc. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 6 it's uh, again we already read that this war, he said, alludes to the war against the evil side, the Sitra Akra, which man must combat and overcome so as to be delivered from it. It was in this way that Jacob dealt with Esau, who was on the other side, so as to outwit him by craft, as was necessary in order to keep the upper hand of him from the beginning to the end as befitted. Moreover, the beginning and the end fitted into one another, the beginning being my birthright, while the end concerned my blessing, so that the two victories were embodied in two vocals of similar sound. Happy thus is he who escapes them and obtains mastery over them. Uh, the good rabbi notes, Daniel Matt, in the Zohar Pritzker edition, says that this refers to Samael and Lilith, the male and the female aspects of Satan, and that Samael, the ruler of the other side, empowered Esau, and is really the father of Esau through Eve. Because of Israel's sin of the golden calf, the Sitra Akra was assigned a share in the sacrificial system in the Torah. The fire on the altar destroyed the power of the Sitra Akra, the evil other side. So I've been uh, reading the Sonchina translation of the Zohar, Bereshit 160a. From this, uh, the legend of Lilith, the origins of evil and the fall of man, uh, by Rabbi Edward L. Nidal.
So let's continue. Um, this is another passage from the Zohar that uh, I found. It's also from Bereshit, Volume 1, Toldot, Folio 138, A to B. And I'm going to go through and explain it after I first read it. Uh, it, it relates a lot. Just as there's the Sitra Achra and the Sitra Yamina, there are the two serpents, the holy serpent and the evil serpent. There are the two trees, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. The tree of life is holy. The tree of knowledge of good and evil is evil, the Sitra Achra. There are also two messiahs, Messiah, son of Joseph, most prominently represented by Jesus Christ, and today Donald Trump. <laughs> And uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the soul can be divided. It also represents uh, RFK Jr. and Vladimir Putin, etc., etc. And Messiah, son of David, who is the holy side. Messiah, son of Joseph, is the evil side. They all re the evil side all relates to Samael and the evil, tortuous serpent, the uh, curved, crooked serpent. Uh, this even relates to the staffs of Pharaoh and the staffs of Aaron and Moses. And everything, again, is polarized into these two counter-universes. And the Sitra Akhra is the evil universe that has to give way at the end of the six days, at the end of the 6,000 years, which is happening now. So, the, um, my battery is dying on my mouse. So, give me one moment. I was prepared, though. <laughs> Hopefully this battery is charged enough to keep me going. The Mossad did that, by the way. There we go. So, <laughs> sorry about that. So, um, reading from Zohar, Bereshit, Volume 1, Toledat, 138a to b. Come and behold, Jacob knew that Esau had to cleave to the tortuous serpent because he's of the Sitra Achra, the evil other side, and the serpent is uh, in his blood. As a result, in all that Esau did, he acted as slyly and crookedly, again, it's the crooked serpent, just like another, just like another tortuous serpent. This is as it ought to be. This agrees with the rabbi, with the words of Rabbi Shimon. And Elohim created the great crocodiles, which refer to Jacob and Esau, the two serpents. And every living creature, again, there's a good serpent and a holy serpent. Jacob is the holy serpent. Esau is the evil serpent. And every living creature that moves, Genesis chapter 1, verse 21, refers to the levels between them. By necessity, Jacob needed to behave wisely against the other serpent. This is as it must be. For that reason, one he-goat is sacrificed monthly to draw the serpent to his place so that he will be separated from the moon. I go really deeply into this uh, in the third volume of my Satanic Secrets of Jesus Christ, which you can find on my website, cjbbooks.com. And I want to thank everybody who's contributing. I, I, I bless you for your patience. It's coming together and it's going to blow your minds. It's worth the wait. Trust me. In addition, a he-goat should be sacrificed on Yom Kippur. This is done with wisdom so as to control the serpent so that he cannot do evil. What it does is it confuses the serpent and gets him off of Shekinah, the female aspect of God. So it keeps Samael off of Shekinah, who is the moon, uh, on Yom Kippur, so that uh, Satan, who is the prosecutor, the accuser, and the punisher in the heavenly court, uh, places all of the sins of the Israelites onto Esau, and the non-Israelites as their scapegoat. This is the meaning of the verse, and the goat shall bear upon it all their iniquities, because it's the scapegoat. It takes on all the iniquities of Israel and is punished and um, damned to hell and damned to disappear from the world to come. 
because of this trick. This is again a trick. It's a trick of confusing Samael with uh, the bribe and the gift and the offering of a he goat on Yom Kippur and once every month in the cycle of the moon, the lunar phases. And I, again, I explain that very thoroughly in this new volume coming out. It's going to blow your minds. This refers to Esau, who is hairy. I think that's talking about the word Zaire. All of this was done wisely and cleverly, wisely and cleverly, like the Mossad, like Jacob. Why? Because it is written, and with the perverse you will show yourself subtle. The serpent is subtle. This is the evil serpent, the tortuous serpent, wise in wickedness, who accuses above and incites below. That's Samael. He's the accuser, the adversary, Hasatan. For this reason, Yisrael hastened to treat him with sly wisdom, so he will not be able to cause evil and rule. In other words, uh, Jacob subverts uh, Esau around the world. Therefore, Jacob, who is imbued with the true faith, treated Esau in all that he did so that there would be no place for that serpent to defile the temple or approach it and thereby rule the world. Thus, Abraham did not need to behave slyly, and neither did Isaac. For Esau, who was on the other side of the serpent, had not yet come into the world. But Jacob, the landlord, had to stand against that serpent. So this is talking about the two serpents, which are referred to in Isaiah chapter 27, verse 1. In that day, the Lord, with his sore and great and with his sore and great and strong sword, that's the avenging sword of Jesus Christ, shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked, crooked serpent. Remember the tortuous serpent. And he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. So that's the root of that Zoharic passage. And uh, the Zohar is also relying upon uh, the many other uh, verses which relate to, uh, <laughs> if I can get this right, relate to these uh, biblical passages. Second Samuel chapter 22, verse 27, to the pure you show yourself pure, that's to uh, the fellow Israelites. But to the devious, meaning uh, Esau and the Sitra Achra, the evil other side of Gentiles, you show yourself shrewd. You are clever. You deceive like Jacob deceived Esau. It's repeated. In, uh, it's also in Psalm 18, chapter 18, verse 26. To the pure, you show yourself pure. But to the devious, you show yourself shrewd. So actually, that's a, another form of um, scapegoating is to accuse Esau of being devious in order to justify the fact that Jacob is actually devious and is stealing Esau's birthright. So uh, Esau gets scapegoated for the fact that he resents the fact that Esau is constantly deceiving him and stealing from him. So that, that creates a rage, a hatred of Jacob, a uh, existential threat to Jacob, and therefore Jacob is justified in exterminating Esau first and getting him before he can get Jacob. Um, another very important passage is Genesis chapter 25, verse 26. After this, his brother came out. Uh, this is the uh, birth of Esau and Jacob. Esau was born first, so he was the firstborn and inherited the double portion. But uh, Jacob tried to trick him by grabbing his heel so that Jacob would be born first. They were twins. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. Uh, he was named Jacob because Jacob means he grasps the heel. 
which is a Hebrew idiom for he deceives. The idea is that Jacob was tricky even in the womb, and he was trying to pull Esau back into the womb by the heel so that Jacob could come out first and inherit the uh, birthright and blessings of the firstborn to the present world and to the world to come. And since he failed in that task, he was then tricky in life. And because Esau was hairy, he put on goatskins, Isaac was blind, and he tricked Isaac into believing that he, Jacob, was Esau. Jacob was the first crypto Jew. And in that way, he uh, deceived Isaac into bestowing the blessings and birthright of Esau onto uh, Jacob. So I think that uh, that covers it pretty well. That's what the Mossad is all about. That's where they got their motto from. That's what they represent, their uh, set of religious beliefs. They believe that they are morally justified in, uh, not only morally justified, but commanded by God to deceive uh, the non-Israelites to uh, wage war perpetually upon them. And the chief means of doing so is through deception. And that often takes the form of generating anti-Semitism sometimes, and then using that as a weapon into duping the anti-Semites into doing stupid things, which actually benefit the Israelites while killing off the non-Israelites. And, um, this has become a general policy of the Israeli government. They uh, also operate by deception, as we've been seeing in uh, the current uh, catastrophe taking place in Gaza, which is what inspired me to make this video. Um, I hope that's all clear. I again want to thank the wonderful, kind, and generous people who have contributed to make this video uh, possible and kept me alive. <laughs> Thank you all so very much. Uh, anyone who would like to contribute, you can do so uh, at my website, cjbbooks.com, and there will also be links in the description below. Thank you all so very much for watching. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see all you good people next time. Goodbye for now.